Welcome to the Organizing and Outlining Academic Papers Workshop presented by the Writing Center at Trident Technical College. We hope that you will find this presentation helpful as you craft your academic assignments. Please remember that writing is a process that has three components or phases that you will cycle through as you work. The first component is invention, the creation or gathering of ideas. The next stage is arrangement, the organization of thoughts and ideas into a specific structure. Finally, there is elocution or expression of ideas. This is the vocabulary, grammar, and punctuation you use to express your ideas in clear sentences and logical paragraphs. In this workshop, we will discuss both the invention and arrangement phases. So what exactly do you do during the invention phase? Well, first, you should read and understand your assignment. Be sure that you know the purpose and audience for your writing. Will you be writing a report to inform your classmates? Will you be writing an analysis of a poem or play? Will you be writing an essay to persuade someone to adopt a new policy or plan? Once you know this, it's time to select a topic. Be sure to select something that interests you, something that will hold your attention during many hours of research. Now it's time to conduct some background research on your topic. Consult your class textbook and notes. Use the library database to find books and articles from newspapers, magazines, and journals. You may also use websites, but be sure to select reputable ones. We will discuss this further in the workshop entitled, Credible Sources and Where to Find Them. Then it's time to read, read, read. If you are working on a literary analysis, be sure to read your text multiple times and possibly find an article from an expert who can explain it or help you to understand the text better. Finally, begin to think critically about your topic. As you read, take note if there is an ongoing conversation about your topic among leaders or experts in your field. Are they discussing how to define something? Are they questioning its quality or significance? Are they talking about a particular policy or program that should or should not be instituted? These are examples of arguable claims. Now it's your turn. Develop your thesis for the paper. Remember, this will be a declarative sentence or statement that makes a claim or takes a stance on your topic. It will be written in the third person, so it will not include the word I or you. Once you have your preliminary thesis, it's time to really engage in research to find evidence to support that thesis. This support might be in the form of quotes from experts, statistics, or other data. Be sure to take notes as you research and keep track of your sources so that it will be easy to include your in-text citations and to organize your works cited page. Finally, once you feel that you have enough information, it's time to select the appropriate outline or structure for your paper. Outlining may seem like an extra step, but it actually saves you time. Let me explain how. The outline helps you to organize your ideas before you write. It helps you to present your information in a logical order. It helps you to see the relationships between ideas and to determine if your thoughts and ideas are cohesive. In many ways, it helps you to to set boundaries for your paragraphs that ultimately could be too long. On the flip side, it helps you to see if you need more evidence to support your claims. Remember, it is much easier to move around a few words or phrases on an outline rather than trying to dissect and rearrange an entire essay after it's finished. So how do you create an outline? First, think about your topic. 
any information you collect that relates to the background of the topic will usually become part of your introduction. This might include the time and place of a particular event, the history of an issue, notable leaders in a particular field of study, or important definitions of terms. Second, think about your thesis. The information you have collected that answers the questions how and why as it relates to your thesis is the evidence or support for that thesis. Finally, arrange related evidence into groups. Notice any themes. This evidence will be organized into paragraphs. This graphic is a representation of a traditional essay format. Notice that it has an introduction, body paragraphs, and a conclusions. All essays do not have to adhere to this format. Some may require more than one paragraph to introduce a topic. Others may need three, four, five, or more body paragraphs to cover all of the necessary information please consult with your individual instructor about the arrangement they suggest. Here are some of the elements of a traditional introduction. First, you will include some type of opening or hook to attract the reader's attention. The type of opening you use is determined by the purpose, audience, and tone of your essay. If you are writing a personal reflection, you might start out with an anecdote or story. For a persuasive paper, you might include a compelling statistic or quote by a well-known leader in the field of study. Once you write your opening, you will want to provide a trans transition sentence or two that shows how the opening relates to your topic. Then, include the background information and definitions as we discussed earlier. If you are writing a literary analysis, you must include the name and type of text you are analyzing, as well as the author. Usually, you will end the introduction with your complete thesis statement. Please note that sometimes an instructor will ask you to consider the counterargument or counterthesis. If so, they might ask you to include it here. If your instructor has not mentioned this, don't worry about it. Just end your introduction with your thesis and move on. Each body paragraph of your paper will focus on one idea or concept. It will begin with a topic sentence. Then you will include your ideas, evidence to support your ideas from outside sources. These are often in the form of quotes or statistics or data and your explanation of that evidence. Remember, paragraphs are not limited to a specific length or number of sentences. However, all of the sentences should be related and they should have a logical flow from one idea to another. A rule of thumb is that if you notice that a paragraph takes up an entire typewritten page, it's probably too long. See if you can break it into smaller, more cohesive paragraphs. Most academic papers include a conclusion that restates or rephrases the main thesis of the paper and summarizes the main points of evidence. Sometimes a writer will decide to include a sentence or two which aims to explain why the topic of the paper is significant, or they might include a call to action. Finally, they might include an amplification, a statement which explains how or why this particular topic might have implications for a wider audience. Your instructor will be able to give you directions on what they expect to see. No matter what you decide to include, do not introduce new evidence in your conclusion. On this slide, you see the basic outline for a five-paragraph persuasive essay. The introduction includes the opener, background, and thesis. In each body paragraph, the writer groups the related evidence. The words proof 
and subproof are listed here to help you differentiate between the ideas that directly relate to the thesis, the proofs, and the underlying evidence, the subproofs. This will be explained more in a future slide. The conclusion restates the thesis and evidence. Let's look at an example, which might help you to understand the usefulness of the outline. Let's say you are asked to write a five-page informational paper in your history class. You have chosen your topic, the gold rush. First, you collect a number of facts about the gold rush as listed here. You notice that historians have found that as the population increased in California due to the influx of foreigners, the native people were impacted. Then you decide to argue a question of quality. The idea that the gold rush had a negative impact on the native population. So your thesis becomes, in the 1850s, the native population of the California territory was negatively impacted by the influx of foreign peoples, the skyrocketing cost of living, and the environmental contamination caused by the gold rush. Here we have an outline of one of your body paragraphs for this particular paper. Remember, your thesis mentioned how the native population was negatively impacted by the influx of foreigners. The topic sentence for this paragraph would include the number of people who migrated to California, that influx, and their countries of origin. Then we need to think about how those 49ers had a negative impact. As you can see, the items listed in A, B, and C answer that question. They brought diseases, they competed for shelter, services, and jobs, and they incited violence. These are your subproofs. Each one will be supported by a statistic or quote that you have found in your sources. After you share this bit of information, which might be in the form of a quote, paraphrase, or summary, you will need to offer some explanation in your own words. If you are assigned an argumentative paper, your outline might follow a similar arrangement. The only difference might be that you must acknowledge, concede, or refute the counter thesis or opposing view. This can be included throughout your paper or in its own paragraph as seen here. If your instructor wants you to follow this format, they will provide additional information about this in your class notes and the assignment direction. Remember, it's important to practice outlining your paper before you draft it. By arranging your information into an outline, you can quickly determine if you have enough evidence to support your thesis or if you need to revise it. If you have any questions or concerns about outlining, please feel free to contact the tutors at the Writing Center. Finally, please remember that the Writing Center at Trident Technical College is available for all students free of charge. You may stop by for in-person tutoring during our office hours, or you may reach us online through our talk, chat feature, or email. Consult our webpage for our hours of operation and links to helpful handouts. Please know that our mission is to help you become a confident, skilled writer. Thank you for taking time to watch this workshop.